that. The liberation of mutant kind has begun. Welcome to the future. Who's this clown? Not clown. Joker. Avengers! Assemble. Nobody tampers with the equipment except Tony Stark. Good idea. United, the Avengers are strong. Hawkeye, hands off. Fool! Have you forgotten my invincible magnetic power? Not this time, Magneto. My mutant brain senses danger. Something unseen is slowly spreading its poison, edging tempers. Think carefully before you do this. You filthy criminals. Five, four, three, two, one. You unlock this door with the... All right, and <laughs> what up, YouTube? Welcome to episode 168 or issue 168 of Two Fat Guys Pools. We really appreciate you being here. Mm -hmm. Just trying to do like a chill podcast vibe here. Oh, yeah, totally. All right, dude. Just, just be like, hey. I wish I had, but I wish I had like a humidifier over here, mm -hmm. just like gassing, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. Oh. Welcome to episode or issue 168 of Two Fat Guys Pull Us. We appreciate every single one of you that are watching this live and who are watching this as a past episode. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, this week has been a week. The comics were released this week. Uh, the comics were released this week, <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about it because that's what this show is all about, right? But mm -hmm. before we get to that, we got to shock. We got to talk about our show's sponsors. And the first sponsor is collected comics and games here in the DFW area. It is a great, amazing, awesome comic book shop here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And uh, Ron and Brent have an amazing store. They actually have three stores, one in Irving, one in Hearst, and one in Fort Worth. And we implore you, please go check it out if you're ever in the area. It's got some really cool stuff. They got comics, they've got back issues, they got new issues, they've got trades, they got collected issues, they've got manga. They've got trading cards, they've got toys, they've got dice, they've got snacks, and they've got plushies. Mm, there it is. Everything under the sun you can think of, they're pretty sure they have. And if they don't, they can get it for you. So check it out. Go over to Collected Comics and Games here in the DFW area. Or better yet, if you don't have the time or not in the area, go to staycollected.com. Go buy something on their website. It's an amazing website. Go check it out. Also, we're in the middle of a milestone giveaway. That's right, we're getting close. We're trying to hit 1,250 subscribers. And only, the only way we can do that is if you hit that subscribe button. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and give us a like. It'd be much appreciated because we're giving away something pretty cool when we hit 1,250 subscribers. That's right, we're giving away a Jim Chunk signed Uncanny X-Men number one from 2019. And it is signed by the boy CGC grade 9.8. So when we hit that milestone, we're giving this bad boy away. So please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And when we hit 2,000 subs, we're giving away in a massive book, a Thor number one Nick Klein sketch variant signed by the great Donny Cates. 9.8 CGC grade. The prophet, the one, the chosen one, Donny Cates. So please hit that sub button because we give away some cool stuff. We also have some other slabs that we're giving away as we hit other milestones. Um, I don't remember what they are, but I know they're pretty damn cool. So, you know, I just thought of there's mm -hmm. a really good chance that Donny Kate signatures go through the roof because he might not sign anymore. Like he might be because he might again. I was about to make a really bad joke, like a really ooh, bad ooh, joke. Ooh. Yeah. Hold so, it in. Yep. I think we all know what I was going to say. <laughs> anyway, you're probably right. So that slab that we're giving away at 2000 is going to be worth even more. And I'm crazy for doing it, but I don't give a fuck. You could, you could change your mind. No, you because I'm a man. Was nope. Like, I'm a man of the people, and I want everyone to enjoy what we give away. So, you know, I want them to enjoy the stuff we give away. I don't want to just be like, oh, we're giving away a trading card. Like, no, man, I want you to enjoy enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Chat, what up? John says, let's go. Hey, I hope everyone's having a great weekend. Patty says, what you going to do when them fat guys run wild on you? Thank you, Joe. But we need one thing more. I do, it's run wild on people. <laughs> right? What's up, y'all? What up, Jaden? 
Uh, Joe coming out swinging. Who checking out the X Men ninety seven this week? Wow, I loved it. Saved it for Saturday morning. Fuck yeah, dude! With a bowl of cereal, like I did. Good old times. Yes, <laughs> I absolutely loved X Men ninety seven. It brought me back to my childhood. And Nate, you are definitely fucking missing out because I think you would love it because it is incredibly comic book accurate. Oh, and I love. Oh my god, I love the just Discord that it is bringing to non-comic book slash um, anti-woke viewers who are just yeah. just can't handle the concept of what X-Men is actually about. It is amazing. But other than that, the show is great. And I have, I thought of this when I was watching it. Nate, I know your true identity. I know who you are. You can no longer hide. Oh my God. You can no longer hide who you actually are. Mm-hmm. And I understand now why you have such a hatred for Cyclops. Are you ready for this? Sure. You are mm-hmm. the son of Cyclops. You are Nathaniel Summers. You oh, are, yes, you You are. You are a time traveler. Mut- <laughs> that is why you hate Cyclops so much. Oh, yeah, because he actually abandoned me and my mother? Yeah, okay, I believe I'm it. just saying, I think I get it. Anyway, uh, John, thank you for the super chat. My top three this week, oh, Beneath the Trees, Man's Best, and Cobra Commander. Not too impressed with much this week. We have the same sentiment, but maybe not the same books. But thank you for your pick of the weeks, and thank you for the super chat, John. I'm um, not realizing that at all. Shaden, DM, I'm just saying y'all are old. I mean, do yeah, okay. you, bro, <laughs> we've never Ouch. shied away from that. Well, we've never shied away. We're old, guy. Oh, no, but it's I'm good. Old, but it hurts me. Yeah, I'm alright with it. Literally. Uh, yeah, have either of you watched the new episodes of Invincible? So good. I have not, and I need to, Empire. I need to. Um, people are finally reali- realizing Cyclops is cool. Uh, Calvin, you got me right there, dude. They did. Cyclops is a fucking badass. And the problem, the thing is, is this is where Nate, this is why I think Nate should watch, because it's about to get where he, you know, his viewpoint of Cyclops will be validated. Uh, because, yeah. you know, Jean is pregnant when the show starts, and we all know who that baby is. Um, it's, not, it's not Cable. It is. I mean, it shouldn't be. You said it was comic accurate. Dude, you need That's to watch Madeline's this kid, not you, not Jean's. Watch the fucking show, Nate. I'm just telling you. Yeah. Uh, please watch the show. I I'm would just saying that either it's not comic accurate or it's not Cable. It's it comic book accurate. both. Nate, I'm telling you now, it's comic book accurate and it's cable. And you'll you, if you watch, you'll understand what I'm saying. <laughs> you, dude, you would love it. I'm telling you, you would love it. Storm is so badass. See, is. that's the kind of thing to tell me to make me watch it. No, but then something happens. I can't let it. I, I got you. Got to watch it, dude. Oh don't nobody in chat. Don't spoil it, please. Uh, Nate is Cyclops' closest fan. It's okay. We be we'll be here when you come out. <laughs> Uh, Empire, my pick of the week is Beneath the Trees with Nightwing being a set close second. Hey, okay. Uh, Invincible Rules, Disciple. I'm waiting until the whole season is out. This split season and a half thing is such BS. I don't like that either. And with you on Cyclops. I, dude, trust me. Like, you, Nate, you just got to watch it. It's so good. Like, and that's the other thing. I remember when they did the previews and they showed Magneto in the, in the, you know, the accurate trial suit with the big M and mm-hmm. people were like, what the fuck is this? And like, it's him in his fucking suit. Like, that's what he looks like. Um, so how many episodes are out right now? Two. There's only two. They come out every Wednesday. I'm telling you, man, I think you'll really enjoy it. I mean, it, obviously you won't, you won't. I won't have won't, any nostalgia it, attachment. No, it will have no, it, it won't have any nostalgia attachment to it. And I don't think, that's why you should watch it. I think you should watch it because one, it pisses off the comic skaters. I think that's just a good worthy endeavor to get into because I oh, think yeah. it's totally that validated. Um, but also it is comic book accurate. Like they are, they're doing some cool stuff and it's just, it just, and I didn't have, I didn't plan for this, the beginning of the show to be this way, but I think we need to talk about it. Um, it just feels good. It's just, you like, my hope is mm-hmm. that if whatever happens in the summer with the X-Men, if it's this direction, 
which is like 90s nostalgia, but still kind of like not necessarily a classic take, but still just kind of continuing that vibe of what it always has been, right? Like we've been not, and I'm not saying what we've been doing out, you know, pre Hickman leaving, which was amazing. What I'm, I'm, what I'm, I'm, I don't know. What I'm trying to say is I'm not, I, I'm ready for there to be a new direction, but if this is the direction, which it seems like most of the stuff that Disney's pushing out content wise kind of mirrors what we're doing in the comics, like it, take it or leave it, whether you like it or not. If that's the case, I'm super pumped. And the fact that the writers that we have are going in, uh, going into it, that's got me more mm-hmm. pumped. But X Men '97 to me, like, it just felt good, and it's got me hyped for a lot of other things. Like, if Disney's doing that, if they're saying, you know what, we're gonna do this, and it sucks, right? Because the guy that was directing it got fired, <laughs> and he clearly did a good job. So something's up there. Uh, I don't know. It was great. Uh, Gene is a clone carrier. <laughs> um, I'm waiting for waiting for that as well. I always uh, felt bad for Psychops because he's such a stiff, but he's he he's actually he actually he does tries. not try. He <laughs> oh yeah he he just tried so hard to stay with his family and not abandon his wife and child. He tried so hard. I mean, please watch it. Oh my god, please watch it. Please god. watch it. I'm not talking about the show. I'm talking about no the character himself. No, I know. But Listen, I, honestly, though, Chad has said enough. Like, if we can get everyone on board and everyone that see, feels very differently about X Men and what's going on in comics and stuff like that, if I mean, literally, yeah, I, I'll I'll watch it. I'll watch it's it. it just feels like the X Men. Like it just it's. And I this is I'm gonna say something, and people are gonna be like, "Bro, I ne- when I watched the Fox original X Men movies." Mm-hmm. Eh, it's it just never it never popped for me like they were, they were mm-hmm. fine but they're i was never like yeah x-men right well, so that, that was I mean, my first exposure to x-men so right yeah yeah so all right um let's see here last says x-men 7 is a massive dub but this highlights disney's problem they need animation around their uh, main mainstays avengers spider-man also it highlights their content problem you know what so in the intro to x-men 97 they show all the old animations prior. Like, you know how, they, you know, when you saw the Marvel logo, you would see all the movies. They do that, too, where they put in the old uh, Spider-Man cartoon and the Avengers cartoon in the background. And then they go into the more modern stuff like the what if and then into X-Men. Mm-hmm. And I just got to feel like if 97 pops off, which I think it will, because like not on not only are is the cartoon great and people are talking about it, and it's getting a buzz. The toys, dude, like they came out with toys and like the new second wave of X-Men 97 toys came out this week. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find them. I found Magneto. And then I found like the main, like the, the hunter human guy, like mm-hmm. all of it gone. Uh, Nightcrawler, Jean, um, Cyclops, uh, who else came out? Someone I'm missing. Oh, Madeline Pryor, like all of them gone, like could not find them. And so that to me tells me like, you know, and it's obviously people my age. It's in their in their mid to late thirties, even forties, who are buying the shit up. And so, again, it's that's what you know. A majority of my generation grew up on. Like, you watch the cartoon, so you can go out and buy the toys. Then a new yeah. series comes out, and you buy the toys. Like, it's working. So anyway, uh, by the way, I love this animation more than the nineties version. X Men ninety seven is great. Comic version coming out next week. Yes, it is. Uh, prologue. Um, I also have a question. What's your perspective on comics gators? I know their side, but do you see anything from their side that's valid? Um, not really. I mean, it, it's always, it's always, woe is me. The industry's dying. Why read comics? If your position is based in bigotry, then that ends the conversation. I'm not interested in listening to it. Yeah. No matter what. Agreed. Um, Black Club does his best, but he just sucks at it. <laughs> Nah, uh, keep talking shit, Nate. I'm loving it. Jaden, oh, yeah, talk shit. <laughs> Dude, that is his middle name. Nate talks shit. <laughs> Proper. Uh, also, the animation could use some polish. There were a couple things in the animation. Like, there was one There was one scene where I noticed that they reused, like, a cycle of animation. Where, mm-hmm. like, like uh, Sunspot is talking and Jubilee's mouth is moving. 
And it's clearly not like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, blah, 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 blah. like she's talking. So there were a couple bits where there was like, okay, they got lazy there. Um, him abandoning his family is one of the best things for him. <laughs> I'm just, you're trolling me now. Like you're absolutely. He's just trying to get now. you going. Yep. All right. All right. Let's get into the week. Shall we? Uh, yeah. We're going to kick it off into our independence. And yeah. Okay. So That's we talked the most about exciting it. part of the show. Oh, the show was 97. Yeah. We'll talk about it more for sure. All right. First up we have from boom studios. Number one's man's best. Uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. Uh, but I will say there was a mixture. I think we talked about this last week with, um, Oh, what was, his, what was our pick of the week last week? Um, Oh, um, Napalm. Na- right, that one. Lullaby. Napalm Lullaby. Where you're confused, right? But it's clear that that was the purpose, right? Like, that was the creative direction. So it made mm-hmm. sense, but it didn't at the yeah. same time. And for me, this one, it took me a little, it took me a, a second to kind of get into, mm-hmm. where I just felt like I don't think there was a an actual, mm. um, creative decision for you to feel confused now it might have me been like i've i've read seven or eight other books right and so like i could have just been down Mm -hmm. but my initial like breaking into the book i was very like i don't know about this one but then it kind of picked (laughs) up towards you know when the 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 rogue planet basically the end where the rogue planet pops up and then they crash land on it and there's like giant robots and the dog you know the pets are basically like hey we've trained for this um that was cool but the initial setup of the book had me a little hesitant um i can see that but i will say i i am i think i'm cautiously optimistic about picking up issue two i think it'll be a game time for me i don't think i'm subbing to it but it'll be a game time, like, do I pick up issue two? We'll see, depending on the week it lands on. But overall, I liked the artwork. I thought the coloring was really cool. Um, mm-hmm. They, yeah, they it's, gave it's, a nice it's, cardstock uh, cover. Which was yes, nice. it did feel great in the hands, yes. Um, especially when you read, like, DC and Marvel, and you're just like, uh, cheap, 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 cheap. And then you jump into your independence, and it just feels good in your hand. And Boom always does a great job with that. They They never really let you down when it comes to physical media in your hands, so... Right. But yeah, that's that's my take on. on it's going to be anticlimactic, but I think this week deserves anticlimactic. But go ahead and go ahead and push the button. Okay, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and call this one my pick of the week. All right. Not oh, like I don't a, have this. Oh, it's my pick of the week. I love this thing. Yeah, so it's just much. like it's kind of your pick but of the week. This is my pick of the week. I I, I did have a lot of fun with it. Um, all, most of the things you said, right? Like the I I really enjoyed the humor here. Like the, like the animal humor was very fun to me. It was, mm-hmm. uh, felt like niche jokes like if you weren't paying attention they kind of right kind of flip your head yeah um there's a lot of like subtext for for storytelling here too which i think is which i'm happy to see because that's really what drew me to this book at first obviously the the art style is very good this cover is the first image i saw and was like damn i'm already interested Mm -hmm. um but um i don't i don't know the correct pronunciation his last name. I'm going to say Pinochet or Pinochet. I'm going to say Pinochet. Pinochet. Um, his work is known for being um, not particularly subtle in the points that it's trying to make or the tone that it's setting or you know things like that. And what intrigued me about this was in some ways it was a little uh, obvious. Like, oh, they're fleeing an earth that's dying because we killed it. And that's a story we've told a million times. That's not a particularly unique story. Uh, however, the idea of like how we get there and like what we do about it is always a unique perspective or can be. Um, so I'm interested in that little subplot. Um, and I love that we're going to tell that story of an overall human issue with cats and dogs. Yeah. No, there's, there's definitely some thickening plot lines for sure. But, you know, again, I'm, I will... <laughs> I'll leave it up to game time on, on issue two for sure. Also, just to give a quick update or show note, if the stream gets cut, there is a storm moving in to the oh. area. And, you know, last time that happened, we lost power for like an hour. So just <laughs> don't be like, whoa, where'd it go? Like if it cuts yeah. out, that's why. All right. Back to chat. Um, okay. We got that part. Uh, they need to take cues from Vox Machina and Castlevania. Castlevania's uh, Empire. I wanted... I wanted that one, but couldn't get myself to pay $5 for a 32 issue. 
Uh, who thinks it's funny people crying about Rogue not being curvier? Curvy as in the 90s. It's a cartoon. People need to put it back in their pants. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Um, uh, that was an awakening for my kids in those days. <laughs> um, this book, or are kidding for kids, yeah. Uh, many kids. Uh, this book looked all right, but I'm excited for Feral uh, next week. Trying to feel, trying to feel that pet comic book since Marvel Unleashed. Right? Oh, that right. Book was so good. Um, John Mine was Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. Next up, we have Cobra Commander issue number three, and we have an Energon sighting in this issue. Um, you know, we finally see or more. Um, you know. We're, our players, the GI Joes, the Cobra Commander, the Cobras, or whatever, are, are starting to circle around this energy source that is Energon. Mm-hmm. Another gruesome issue, if you will, but not a horror issue. Uh, outside of um, the Sentinel, I guess you could call him, of Cobra, like literally ripping off his his human shell to become <laughs> this like demon looking thing. I don't know. I, that must be a. a a deep GI Joe lore because I didn't know who the who that was. Yeah, I had no idea what was that one. Um, but again, I did like you know Cobra Commander is giving a very sadistic Joker vibe uh, in this issue. So, you know, more specifically with you know the uh, the um, the the blood drawn smiley face on his on his mask <laughs> uh, and him watching you know and him being a manipulator. But it did feel it felt a little. Um, simplistic does that make sense like like cobra doing the manipulating to me was kind of like well duh you know what i mean like i don't know it it kind of felt like it was this issue kind of felt cruise control outside of the reveal of the demon bodyguard um and the energon uh other than that i and i'm you know i know john i think uh i think you said this was one of your picks of your top three and i'm not trying to shit on it um but that was, that's what it was for me. It just kind of felt like a little bit of a cruise control with uh, outside of the exceptions of the big reveals. Uh, mainly, I was very excited to see the Energon pop up and see what, you know, what are we doing? What it, What's... Because you have to assume... I mean, it's a no-brainer, right? We're going to get a massive crossover book at some point. Yeah. Where sure. Whether it's G.I. Joe's versus, versus Transformers or if it's the Void Rivals coming in too and it's just going to be like a three-way you know, crossover oh. event. Shut up. I knew oh. you were going to do the minute to say it. I thought of it. <laughs> um, but that to me has got me really excited. So obviously like we're setting up the board, right? We're setting up the chess pieces so that we can have this massive play, but we'll have to wait and see. But I, again, I, it was okay. It, it was fine. It, it did its job <laughs> for me, I guess. I, I literally, no, I just, I was frustrated by this one. I just was like, we pushed, we we literally said, oh, here's Energon, and that was it. Like, there's no other plot movement at all. Mm-hmm. I guess the, the guy, whoever he is, showing his true form is something, but it just was like, this didn't push anything forward. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't for me. Yeah, and again, it might, it, some of it's a lost, right? It's lost on us because we're not huge G.I. Joe fans. So, mm-hmm. you know, there might be something in here that's just, like, screaming, like, holy shit, this is amazing. And if it was Transformers, I'm sure I'd be, sh- you know, shouting from the rooftops, right? But I just, right. I don't know enough about GI Joes, and I think that's why Duke kind of is a little bit more. I don't know. I just feel like Duke is better presented, um, because it feels like I can connect with that book, even though I don't know most of the players. Whereas this one feels like a very deep cut, um, and so I just I just don't like when you know when characters show up I'm like I don't know who that is I just don't I don't know why I don't know the significance of that character but I'm still gonna read it but the Energon thing um, it was pure torture I loved it maybe my favorite issue of this run but it does feel underwhelming Joe says nice. uh-huh, uh-huh. you said it put it back in there <laughs> uh, it's one of my top three because I was struggling to find a third good book oh got gotcha, you John you're not the only one yeah this was a hard week. Uh, y'all's y'all here. There is a another big wave of books in the universe coming soon as Duke and Cobra Commander mm. wrap up. I did not. I did not. No. Hopefully, there's a bumblebee. That doesn't surprise book. me. Oh, there's a bumblebee book or a hot rod book. Oof, oof, oof. Don't get me started. 
anyway, all right. Next up from Ram V, we have Dawn Runner issue number one. And Nate, oh, I would love. I actually went with the Dyke Ruan cover. Nice, my... dude. Nice. Uh, damn, my voice voice commander sucks tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, okay. Before you start, okay. This is my pick of the week. Pick of the week. Oh. But I want to hear. I don't want to tell you why until I hear your notes because I have a feeling you were disappointed. Okay, so I will because I can be melodramatic. I will tell you what my considered thoughts are, which is what I wrote in my review. Okay. Three and a half out of five stars. So take just remember that. That's not a that's not a bad review. No. I said interesting first issue, firing on all cylinders to start. The opening, like the Dawn Runner scene, like where you flip the page, it's just like Dawn Runner, and she's like running next to it. I was like, this is peak nineties action film. Like I loved it. I loved it so much. Very okay. good aesthetic throughout this whole this whole thing. Um, I thought we had an interesting story, good mix of both world building and like character moments, like enough to like, I started to feel like, Oh, I can get the picture of some of these characters. That guy's an asshole. This, this girl is like kick ass, but humble. Like you get, you get the feel for some of the characters. Hmm? Um, the fight scene, uh, the, the, between her and the, and the Dawn runner and the, Kaiju. It was messy. It was messy. It was it was a little messy. It, which was strange because the rest of the book was was very clean, um, but it was messy. Um, however, and I can't stress this enough, the ending almost made me throw the book away. Really, I, I hate the ending and the twist with a massive, why do you huge, hate the, fiery so, passion? So why do you hate the twist? Uh, it is. It, have you ever seen Face Off? John Travolta. Yeah, I haven't seen stage. it in a long time. There's this trope of like, oh, if something happens or our d- identities get mixed up, but we don't understand what's going on, and we're in the mega computer now. And like, I hate it. I hate it so much. Okay, so I, it's I a have trope. A- I've always hated. I've never been interested in it. And the all of the momentum of where I thought this book was going was instantly destroyed so, in one of the worst ways it could have happened. So what do you think happened at the end? Here's I will tell you, but I will say first. I absolutely don't fucking care. Okay. It's not okay. interesting. <laughs> okay. 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 No matter okay. what. Okay. Um, what it sounds like to me is that this, um, this Dawn runner has been run before with another human and there have been glitches with the humans inside and somehow it, they have like flashes of the identities of the, um, the humans inside of him, of when inside of Dawn runner. It's like, oh, this was the second time this malfunction has happened with a human in there, and mm. then maybe their brains get. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Okay. All right. That's respect. I think you're halfway there. And again, I don't know. I'm not right. And I'm Here's sure what- the even Evangelian ness of the all is what is really touching your tip right now. But <laughs> my dude, my dick is so hard right now. And so here's what I'll tell you. I think you're right, uh, but I think you're wrong. Okay. So yeah, the beginning, awesome. And then when she got suited up and she was going through the whole thing and you, there's, here's the other thing, the artwork in this book, so good, like intricate details, just very, Oh, it made me, it just felt good and it had fluidity. It moved right where I think you're wrong is I don't think that we're seeing a past vision. Well, I think we are, I think we are seeing a past vision of someone who ran it on this Dawn runner. Okay. Or this this king, what do they call it? King King they're, Killer? No. Uh, Iron Kings. Iron Kings. So they're all they're saying this one's different, right? This thing is different. Yeah. The reason why I think it's different is because there is a soul within the machine. And the okay. soul is the guy we saw at the end. I don't I think he may have been uh, part of the but he was part of the program and he's sense. living his own reality within the machine. And, yeah. and you're right. It is hitting me with the Evangelion because in Evangelion, Shinji's mother, her soul was infused into Ava one. And so to me, mm. you've got Ram like doing his homework. I'm sure he's watched Evangelion and he's probably watched the rebuild, which pushes that storyline even further, like to a, to a depth that you couldn't even imagine. Yeah. So I'm really excited for you to see rebuild whenever you get a chance, but that's a commitment. Cause it's like five hours. Yeah. Um, but 
I language. Sorry, John. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just it reminded me of that, and the way they did it, right? Like the way that the faces glitched in, and it had this like like they were both kind of in their own heads, right? But the mystery is like who is it? And so the what you're saying is it's somebody that that piloted the Don Runner previously. And I think I think your I think your version makes more sense. I think I think there is a soul. That's what makes this Don Runner different. That in order for it to be this excellent machine, this this mm-hmm. top of the line machine, they had to infuse humanity into it. So there's a human heart, soul, whatever you want to call it. And I'm sure we're gonna go down that 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 storyline of you know, is it ethical? Is it a human soul? Is it is there an actual human in there? We don't know. Mm-hmm. If it's the soul route, you've got me even more because that whole idea in Evangelion is so pressed. What is a yeah. human soul, right? And I think that's where we're going. And I don't know, like it just like initially the book was like, all right, this is cool, it's kaiju. All right, yeah, neat. But then when we got to the second half of the book, for me, I was like, oh, that I did not see coming one bit. And the fact that we're playing with that to me says Ram wants to play with these, you know, this concept that was established in 1996 with Evangelion or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And to me, that's really exciting because it's not just another mech book. We've got a whole nother layer that is outside of the smash and grab as outside of the big robot fighting a giant monster. You're getting into uh, potentially a, a theological discussion about humanity. And to me, that is incredibly fun. So it got me stoked. I was like, this this is cool. Like Ram V doing Evangelion, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, and that does make me a little bit more excited. I just I've seen that trope done so many times. And I probably should have thought that it, it being Ram V that he's gonna have more than just that. I don't think it's yeah, I just don't think it's that simple, sort of yeah. Simpleness, but I was just I was I was so utterly taken aback from it, unexpected, that I was just like, mm-hmm. but it's also Ron V, so I'm not jumping off anytime soon. I could have pissed right. me off 10 times more than that. I'm still going to be. <laughs> Listen, if uh, I held out through him through Detective Comics and seen the that the work was worth it, I'll, I'll do it here too. <laughs> Joe, damn, Jim, my wife won't let me watch if y'all, if she hears that talk. I'm sorry. I'm just, I had to defend my book. I'm sorry. Um, Cause it's good. Like I, I was, I didn't know what to expect. I think, I think obviously I expected Kaiju, right? But yeah. when that second half happened and it's like, we're time jumping. I mean, the first thing I immediately thought was like, Oh my God, this is Evangelion. Like this dude's soul is trapped in the machine. And does he know it? I, yeah. Maybe he doesn't know it. Like it's just, and who knows? We got to see. Um, John, I'll give Don Runner another issue, but I wasn't thrilled with this book. Got to trust the writer, though. I mean, you know, it. You're free to choose. I just, I think there's something here. Uh, and again, like I, I was off the Ram V train. You know, I was like, man, this guy's too. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just. I'm too stupid. I'm dumb. Like, I, I can't. I can't read Ram V. Um, and he came back. Like, he just. He 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 delivered a right hook, and I'm I'm right there with it. So, so that's just me. All right, next up, if you find this, I'm already dead, issue number two from Dark Horse. Yeah, this one kind of fell short from where we were last week. Okay. Um, this was a very art-centered book, which I'm all about, and the artist did a phenomenal job. The world building okay. through images was great. It was, it was literally, at one point, she is crawling through the bowels of this planet because it's Mm -hmm. also a living god and i was like yeah i can see that i see what's happening here and it's it's like that's a really hard con like who what asshole writer writes that in a script and gives it to their to their artist and it's like hey draw someone uh withering through the bowels of a living planet (laughs) and he's like got it no problem got it done but he did but he literally did and i love that um however the pros that we did get, and again, I'm okay with limited pros and letting the arts tell the story. It's comics. I'm about mm-hmm. it. Right. But what little pros that we did get was, I mean, so over the top dramatic, purple prose, waxing poetic, sort of just 
look how smart I am because of the weird fancy words I use. And it we took the entire issue and didn't say anything. Like it was it was strange. It was really weird. That's um, kind of how I feel about this whole week is like there were a lot of books this week that just did a lot of mm-hmm. things but didn't do anything. Yeah. Um, or we or told, like, or, or told sorry or told us things that we already knew. Mm-hmm. Sorry. No, you're right. You're right. And there was a little bit of like a moral or a story or like a little bit of like tone setting here. Um, she's like traveling. She like gets captured by the some of the locals and they're like religious fanatics and they sacrifice people to their gods and that's what happens to her. She gets sacrificed and thrown down a hole that people never come back from. She goes through a roller coaster journey of this planet's insides and then gets saved by these weird robot people uh, who are just turning just turning her into a slave to literally walk on a cog that keeps their energy going. Mm. Uh, and then there's an entire rebellion and the aliens are rebelling and they want her to be the linchpin. And it's just like, okay, this is moving really fast. What's going on? So the whole story of like, oh, oppression isn't just a humanity thing. Like, oh, that's a big concept. What does that mean? I don't know. Never picked it up again. Um, and then the twist at the end was the person that's doing the oppressing in this particular area of the planet is a human. That's why they wanted her to be the sacrifice. And so, or not the sacrifice, they sacrifice themselves to get her to the human so that maybe she can stop. Okay. Which is all inferred. You were not told or really even shown, but I don't know. Gave it three out of five because the art was so good. Story sucked. I think this is only three or four issues though, so I'll, I'll just finish it out. Gotcha. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. Who, who knows? We could we could turn around. All right. All right. All right. We're jumping over to our Marvel comics. We're gonna kick it off with Captain Marvel issue number six. Uh, you know, uh, you know, got to see our girl, uh, Marvel Mar. Uh, Laura, how do you say it? L'Oreal? L'Oreal. L'Oreal. Um, really wasn't too, like, I felt like she wasn't as OP as she was in previous issues. So she kind of felt like, I don't know, like the opportunity was wasted with her in this one, outside of her just showing up so that Genesville could get the hammer and swing it around. Like, that's literally had, like, it just kind of felt wasted. That's why she was used. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, like, I know the threat that we're building in this book is supposed to be pretty monumental, but it just doesn't, I, I mean, there's parts where I'm like, okay, but then I'm like, I don't know if this is really that believable. So I'm, I'm actually kind of, I don't like saying this, but I, I just, I feel like this book is kind of floating at the moment. Like, like we're clearly doing something, but it just doesn't like, it doesn't feel like it matters at the moment. Um, it just feels like we're hitting beats to hit beats rather than actually do something fun. Whereas like Alyssa's Wong, Alyssa Wong's Deadpool, like just banger after banger, like constantly, <laughs> you know, moving the story forward. And it felt good. Like I was like, oh, man, I cannot wait for Deadpool next week. And when Captain Marvel pops up, I'm like, is it going to pick up any at, at, at any point? Like it just doesn't it doesn't feel like Captain Marvel. And maybe that's more of a compliment to Stephanie Phillips's run you know like you know what i mean or kelly thompson sorry kelly thompson okay. i i was like I'm, i get the i get them mixed up no, uh, no, no, kelly thompson okay. uh kelly thompson's run you know like she her run was just so good and it it literally had maybe three misses out of the entire run mm-hmm. um and they were all filler issues that were not good um yeah but you clearly have an issue like oh we'll personal, get there personal personal deeply personal issue with filler don't worry We'll get there. Um, but that, you know what? This whole arc kind of feels like a filler issue. Like, what are we doing? Like, I still don't know what we're doing. Like, I know, and even though well, it's... We're building great, up Omen, but it sure. just doesn't feel... Like, the stakes aren't there for me. Like, it doesn't feel like anything's really happening. Or, it's like, Omen's just going to get tossed aside after the arc is over. Like, it's not going to matter. Yep. Um, Which, by so, the I don't way, know. We're, we're through six issues, and the arc is still not ending. Right. I don't know. Uh, I will say that this issue officially made this uh, week by week, if I'm in the mood, book. Um, you don't put my favorite characters. You don't put Teddy and Wiccan and Jenis and Phyla Vell and L'Oreal all in one book. 
and not only miss a lot of their temperaments, but completely underutilize them and get away with it. Not even Alyssa Long gets that. And so... Um, don't worry, John. We'll get there. I just... Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, if I, we'll see how the wind blows uh, next month, because right now I'm not interested. Uh, Joe, I think it's... I think it's the story. I don't think it's the writing because like there are moments within the book that I'm like, oh, cool. Like, like it, it, it still feels like Alyssa Wong's writing. Like it's still like, I feel her identity in the book. It just feels like the story is still, it's like this amoeba that like, it feels like we have a direction and then we morph and we're talking about a family and how Captain Marvel has been adopted in this family. Like it just, it feels loose and it feels like it's moving really fast and I, I don't have enough time to like gather what we're doing. And, it, and I don't feel like I, I just don't, I don't know. It feels like I don't care about the story. That's, um, that's the problem. And the I relationships don't. and the relationships don't feel genuine. Again, where's war machine? Like where, you know, I, I don't yeah. really care. Yeah. Like I don't care. Well, why isn't captain Marvel taking care of that? You know, like that's, that's, that is a big thing to me is, we're setting up that like we started off with the negaband thing with a character we're creating another character we're creating another character i, I actually like uh yuna like i think she's a cool character I, I like her addition but like the way that we're the way that we're building omen and yuna is like oh oh, oh, oh uh, shit, okay here and then it's like it feels very hastily. discombobulated very hastily done. and it this is the problem it feels hastily done and we've done six issues and I still don't care, and I still uh, don't feel like anything's concrete. No, and it's hastily pe- pe- pieced together. It's just like, yeah, you're right. Like they're rushing to put it together, and then like, look what we did. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I still don't know what we're doing. You know, that's <laughs> that's to me where it is. Um, and John, don't worry, we will get to Iron Man. I, ooh, god, dang that. Oof. Uh, John, I agree as much as I love the relationship with Iron Man and Frost, but it feels like X Men side book, and Iron Man. Uh, needs to be the center of peace, not the psychic the to the X-Men. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, I think that's the next one. Yeah. Invincible Iron Man, issue number 16, a.k.a. the definition of a filler issue. Nothing, yet everything happened. No, nothing happened in this book that we already knew. Like, it was a complete, it just felt like a waste of time. I don't care about the Omega Sentinels. I think the Omega, or the uh, Omega Sentinels, just the, the Iron Man Sentinels, I don't care about the Sentinel Buster suit. Uh Tony, it it just what is this book? Like it it it's totally a you know a filler issue for X-Men. So that when there are no more Sentinels, it's like, oh, it's because Tony fought him in the desert. Go read uh, Iron Man number 16. Like and also the problem with this issue, it did the spawn thing. It did the Tom uh Todd McFarlane thing. Oh. Where it described to you what you were looking at on the page in detail, and I don't need that. I just don't. I can look with it. Like, give me dialogue, right? Don't give me. I know that this suit's on its last leg because the engine is overheating. Shot of the engine overheating and him going, Ugh! like I, <laughs> like, like I don't need to read that. I don't That's need to read it. Um. Well, Gary, I, again. Gary Jerry, I feel like is being painted into a corner by Marvel. Like yeah, I just you're you're an apologist at this point. No, I'm not, because there that being said about this issue, we got the tiniest of movement within character development, which was Faye Long. And what are we doing right now in X-Men? Get it over, please. Finish it so we can get to what we really want to do, which is not mm-hmm. Krakoa. And who's 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 lumped in with Krakoa? A really badass villain called Fei Long, who's actually got Tony on the ropes, and now he's just being discarded. Because when this run started and Fei Long was established as the bad guy, dude was awesome. He was taking out the mutants. He took out Stone. He took out Tony. He ch- he literally changed his genetics. He's not considered a mutant, but he put in enough radiation that the dude can shoot energy blasts out of his mouth like Nappa from Dragon Ball Z, like. It was awesome. And now he's piloting a suit and he's like, not today, Tony. Like, what are we doing? And it just feels like it genuinely, it genuinely feels like the writers that were brought in to end the fall of the, to end Krakoa that didn't have work established, that hadn't worked a lot because we'll get to another X book that I felt like, okay, that was cool. 
you know, mm-hmm. those writers have an advantage. And with Gary Jerry, it's like, oh, I'll just do this. I just, I just got, th- I'm going to throw it on the wall and see what sticks. And if people like it, great. And we had a comment from a viewer last week saying, are y'all fucking crazy that you didn't like uh, the rise of X book last week? And I'm like, no, it wasn't well, good. It wasn't good. <laughs> but when we get to fall of X or no, whatever, or no fall of X and rise of X is better. Cause it's by Karen Gillan. Because again, yeah. like I'm saying, Karen Gillan has an established amount of content that he can build. Whereas Gary Jerry is like, just do the fighting, do all the action here without any, like with no concept with, without any context. I will say this with genuine little judgment. Yeah. Um, but just from hearing you, agree, John. someone someone who quite enjoys Jerry Duggan's work. Yeah. Um, I think he is, his writing style is like a flame. Like a, not a flame, like a fucking, what am I saying? God damn it. I don't know. You were saying it. What do you light a cigarette with? Match. It's like a match. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my God. Literally, he burns bright and hard really quickly. And you're like, oh my God. And then it peters out and once it's done it's fucking done 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 you know you can't relight it again it's done and i think that's how he starts a lot of his books anything i've read by him like his health his uh, hellfire issue good he but he did it in this issue he didn't have to worry about keeping up with a bunch of stuff i don't know it just seems that every single one of his books that he touches marauders petered out in the first wave of um stuff his x-men book is is literally they're dragging a dead body like this, this his cable was Iron good Man though, book. but his cable was a mini. His cable was t- was twelve issues, and that's it. It wasn't thirty one issues. It wasn't sixteen plus issues. Right. That's what I'm saying. The man burns out. <coughs> and that, I mean, all right, then just make sure you don't put him on anything too long. Um, he certainly doesn't. You didn't want him driving the final force of your the end of your. No, no, it sucks. But anyway, yeah, this this book was it was a waste. I'm, I'm I don't like saying that. I don't say that. I don't say that easily, but it just felt like a waste of my money. Like it sucks. Yeah. I hate saying that. I don't ever want to say that. Like I don't. And I'm, I'm sorry I said that. I don't feel You're bad. Saying it. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Before we jump into this book, let's get to the comments. Um, I would love uh, in Jed McKay's Avengers book we get a moment mm. that Carol talks to Tony and tells him to get Rhodey or Rhodes out, so she'll be, be. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, nothing happens in. An entire book besides big Iron Man suit swatting Sentinels, and that's that that <laughs> isn't even the freaking biggest suit. God killer, anyone? Yeah, the fucking uh, celestial one. Um, laziest X Men book I've read in the last six to five five to six years. Also, I was thinking about something the other day. We got the mutants living in tunnels about, but the Avengers had a city that's empty for Avenger base for them to live in. Yep. Stop! Stop! <laughs> you guys are. That's not how it works. They don't care about that. They're not keeping up with continuity like that at all. Well, but they McKay's mentioned his head. No, McKay that's is not literally true. worried about Moon Knight. He, about, they brought up uh, they brought up the X Men in the McKay book. Great. I, I'm not saying nothing at all, but to go so far as to think, oh, well, maybe we could do this and yeah, we could give right, the player right, like, no, 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 no. That's never gonna happen. Yeah, that's way too finite. Fin- finite. Finite. Um, finite. <laughs> Resurrection Magneto issue number three. Here's the next book that's really fun. No, I mean it is. Here's well, the next I book. You. Here's the next one that's really fun because it's Al Ewing and he and he has the continuity to to write what he wants to write. And so we get an establishment of all these dark entities that we're dealing with here in Mutant Hell have some form mm-hmm. of connection. And yeah. the, it looks like the connection is um what the fuck's his name? The King Shadow King. Yes. Shadow King. Shadow King is this kind of connective glue amongst all these other nasty entities. That... Oh, that's who's on this cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't make that connection. I didn't either until I started reading it because that's what happens. Um, and there's some connected connectivity to the mask. The uh, that remember the mask that um, Genesis had in um, or even in Ten of Swords. Remember the the, the demon mm. mask. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That thing's in here too. Like plaguing plaguing uh, Storm. Um, okay. but we get our resurrection, right? They, they fight the shadow King. They fight this concept. The shadow King is basically trying to tempt Magneto to, to into staying and, and, and dealing with his guilt. And he does, but he, he does it in a way that kind of proves that he needs to be resurrected. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of this issue in a nutshell, but we get a lot more character development with Magneto, a lot more character development with, um, 
storm, which you're like, how do you even do that? And we did it. Um, she ends up sacrificing herself in this book uh, oh. to the point where she almost, it looks like she's going to die, but Magneto is like, live! And like, you know, basically brings her back too. But then we get a really cool scene where he he comes out of the portal that she went into at the beginning of the issue, at the beginning of the book, mm-hmm. and he his like body gets reformed as he's walking out of the portal. So you like you see the skeleton, and there's like muscle and veins, like you know, getting. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really fucking cool. And so he's back, and he's he's about to run some shit. I think. Um, uh, I liked so. Uh, John says I liked uh, Resurrection Magneto, especially that the end. But holy crap, it was wordy. It was wordy, but I felt like the words mattered. Uh, because there were other books this week that were wordy that just like could uh, Iron Man, for instance. Like it was wordy for no fucking reason. Like we have Tom King on the show this week, so you know something. No oh god. Man. Anyway, if I had a Marvel pick of the week, this would be my Marvel pick of the week: Resurrection Magneto. It was I loved it. It was great. So super excited to see where because Ewing you know Ewing writes Magneto and writes Storm Mm -hmm. very well yeah Um, I agree so yeah all right Moon Knight issue number three it's been out of order um yeah I don't know what's going on um mine did you're fine you're out of order um you're out of order um (laughs) again I I didn't have a problem with the issue but again like we know like we know what's going on, so can we, we just do? get to? Can we just no, no? In the sense, like, like oh, what we this, know this isn't Moon Knight. He's doing bad correct. things in the name and of we Moon know Knight. that it's it's causing problems for the Midnight Mansion group, right? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, like we know that, and so we we were just kind of, you know, McKay like reiterated what's the problem, and like we know. Can we? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like outside of outside of soldier and the group asking for help with from the vampires, which, you know, is pretty is a pretty big deal, especially with the blood hunt happening around the corner. Like Mm -hmm. we can connect those dots like there's going to be some uh, conflict interest or conflict of interest there. Um, But like when I was reading it, it's not that I didn't enjoy it. I did. But again, like we know, like we know (laughs) so what are we doing like it didn't feel like we moved the plot forward outside of asking for the vampire's help we're not we're that's not what he's doing here and and i'm not saying it's right or wrong but but we didn't push the plot forward because that wasn't his intention here no i know that jed Jed mckay is doing what i really love what i love and why this was in my top three books of the week this would be my marvel pick Mm. is uh it's a we're doing a character study of of the midnight mission group and this was soldiers character study and yeah yeah i really enjoyed it i loved seeing how much guilt that he's carrying not that i loved he had guilt but like it just makes him a really real character and Mm -hmm. and enjoyable and i think the intention if i'm going to guess is to build this team up and make us really feel for them and then i think the motherfucker is going to take them down i think we're going to have some i think blood hut is going to kill some um I'm not really looking forward to it. I don't think it'll be Tigra. Um, I oh god, think don't it you could don't be. you put that? Don't do. Well, that. I said I, I said I don't think it'll be Tigra. I understand that, but you're gonna fucking jinx it, and then she's gonna end up dying. And I'll be like, well, I love this character, and now I'm pissed. I think it'll be Hunter's Moon, and I think it'll be either Soldier or um, fuck Reese. Mm-hmm. So I don't want it to be any of them. I guess if it's happened, to Hunter's Moon is fine. He can come back, but like. It'll just be uh, worse. Than, uh. Yeah, I don't know. I just, um, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was great. So, but I'm. It's I'm not that I like didn't. That. No, no, no. It's <laughs> not that I didn't enjoy it. I just, I wanted more movement. Like, I, it's not that I don't enjoy a character, you know, uh, evaluation of soldier. No, not at all. But like, mm-hmm. who is he? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, or yes, I desperately. Want, like, I'm very much. That's still true. That's right. Still true. And so, like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like Moon Knight as well, but it's a transition issue. I like the focus on Soldier. Joe, question. We had, or half halfway, we know Jed McKay is the main man at Marvel, so let's rate his books so far. Doctor Strange, for you, it's Doctor Strange. 
Black Cat, Moon Knight, Avengers, and more if we if we forget them. Um, yeah, I'm actually looking right now at all his yeah. big books. So it's Avengers, Black Cat, Doctor Strange, um, Moon Knight, Moon Knight. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's yeah. That's oh it. shit! His Iron Man. Didn't he write Iron Man? No. No, you're thinking of Christopher Camel. Oh, he did an Infinity. Ooh. He did a he did a fill it issue, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Uh I would I say out of all too. of those, I actually haven't read any of his Black Cat. So my bad I on that. His Black, Cat. his Black Cat was good. I, I know I know that's a my bad. Um I would say and I haven't read his his um any of his strange stuff. I or I think I started the Death of Doctor Strange and I just was like, Ugh, no, I don't I'm not a Doctor Strange guy at all. Apparently it's good now, that's, though. That's a big my bad. But, like, it was so messy, too. Like, there was Death of Doctor Strange. And then there were the tie-in oddities. And then there was just just Strange, where it was Clea. And then right. there was the Resurrection. And then there was his ongoing book. And it's like, it's for lot. someone who's not into it, it's very messy. Um, right. And so, I, th- I think he definitely, <laughs> he is good enough that he deserves for me to go back and read all of that one day. One day I'll do it. John, I think, John and Joe, I think for me, it's a tie between Black Cat and Moon Knight, but I think I'm going to lean more into Moon Knight because just like, um, who's the other author right now? Oh, uh, duh, Rainbow. Um, I think Jed McKay has done a really good job of making readers interested in characters that they otherwise would have never known existed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give it to Moon Knight. Like it's gonna just the edge edge it out to Moon Knight. Because that Moon Knight his original like I mean, I'm liking what we're doing here, don't get me wrong. But that Moon Knight run that we read was just so good. Like how many times was it our pick of the week? Multiple times. I mean Lots that that issue where him and Hunter's Moon go into like into the mansion, but also go into the afterlife and start realizing that when they die, they're becoming part of a collective of other Moon Knights within Khonshu. Like that was just fucking cool, and then him wielding them as a weapon was just badass. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to give it to Moon Knight. Like that's just me. John, uh, his Doctor Strange stuff is great. It seemed messy, but it's slowly coming together and has some legit great moments. All right. I really want to. I, I don't know that I have the time, especially <laughs> my life and I'm moving houses and all that shit. I don't have that mm-hmm. time to do it. But I'd love to read all that before Blood Hunt because I want. It's Jed McKay, and I want to know. I want to be in. I want to know the tiny little details. I want to see the hints from the Doctor Strange run. I, right. I want to know it all. Uh, we'll see. Maybe it'll happen. I still have my Marvel Unlimited subscription, so. I think I need to jump back on that. Like, I'm got to cancel something to get on that, so. I actually made the mistake and left my year one on and got charged for the year. Oops. Um, well, it's at an insanely reduced price. Like, if you do it by itself, I think it's like, Hundred and fifty dollars a year, and I got it for fifty. So oh, shit. I'm not mad about it. But yeah, it's it's definitely a surprise when you get that charge. Yeah. X Men Forever issue number one from Karen Gillen. You know we're filling in the blanks. We're filling in the blanks, and again, this is where I was telling you, like w- when there when there are certain writers who have a substantial amount of content within the Krakoa era of X Men when they mm-hmm. do stuff like this or when they're writing their books towards the end, their books just feel, they feel better. They read better. Their establishment within the content is better. So I think Karen Gillan has an advantage. Like you said, I think you're right. The match analogy works. Like when Gary J came in, he came in swinging and it was like, Ooh, it just blew up. And now it's, it's fizzling. Whereas mm-hmm. Karen Gillan's got, he's got a candle and it's just burning and we're, we're having a great time. Um, and so we get a lot of, you know, a lot of establishment of what he had set up prior, you know, mm. when we were talking to Mystique and she was jumping into the Sinister timelines and she went back and talked to Sinister back in, you know, the the 1800s or whatever during, or 19, I don't remember when, it, maybe it was 1900s, uh, in England. And, you know, she said something to him and it ended up killing him because mm. she revealed the future to him. Well, we find out what that was. We find out that she's had a dialogue with this domain version of Essex for a while now um, <clears throat> and that she's keeping a secret for that version of you know because 
the whole thing is is that a majority of the X Men outside of Xavier and probably Doug is <laughs> that they're trying to keep the dream alive, right? They're trying yeah. to keep Krakoa alive. So Destiny, even though she has a vision of what's about to happen, she's trying desperately to keep it alive, right? So we see that here. We see how we got a resurrection of Doug, because if you don't remember, Doug is actually with Krakoa. Doug got mm -hmm. captured by Krakoa, and he started running away. So what we find out is that this version of Doug is actually a, a sinister clone. <laughs> oh. Yep. And, and I'm he's... I'm going to have to mute this shit. <laughs> okay, don't worry. Um, so over it. But again, what, we're, what are we doing? What we, know, we know Xavier's endgame, which is he's not telling anybody outside of Doug and Rasputin that he's going to end it. He's going to kill Moira so that Krakoa never existed. And we're getting that next week. Like we are we are getting it next week. I saw the RB Silva uh black and whites on his Instagram, and like literally it shows Xavier pointing a gun at a 12-year-old version of Moira, and she's like, ah, like it's happening. Like he's <laughs> unless it doesn't, right? But I just can't like unless it doesn't, because they don't do that. It's well, that's what I'm saying. But like, if we're gonna establish a whole new, you know, era of X Men comics in the summer that are nostalgic to '90s, Krakoa has to go. Like, it's just not gonna exist. Um, that's a shame. Well, it is a shame, and uh, you know, is it gonna vilify Xavier? Hundred percent to the point where he's not. It doesn't okay. look like he's gonna be in the comics. Like he's. <laughs> I'm I'm very okay with that. Yeah, I know you are. Uh, uh, so that's where we're headed. Like that is the, that is exactly where we're headed. So, you know, it is what it is. You, but this is what. No, go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I'll no, no, wait, no. I don't remember what I was gonna say. Go ahead. I was just gonna say any. If you tell me the like, one way you get me to buy every X book that exists is you tell me Xavier and Cyclops are perfect. Well, back. you know that that's literally like, I'll buy every variant. I'll buy every issue. You know, um, Cyclops is in the Jed McKay fucking uh, Ryan Stegman book. Like I'm he's, probably not getting any. Yes, you are. Anyway, Jed uh, McKay, I'll get the Jed McKay book. But yeah, because and it's Ryan Stegman. I know. Fuck, I know. It's going to be so. Oh, can't say those words. Um, <clears throat> oh, guys, been forever. Maybe I'm just better because I bought two covers. This one made me angry at how much nothing there was. In it. it was all it was all. Hey, we saw this one page of new stuff. Hey, we saw this one page of new stuff. What up, Holden? Um, because it was it quite literally is just a, f a filler slash fill in gap issue. It's just wouldn't it be uh, great if the story was just completely told the first time and you didn't put in hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, oh, what's up, Holden? Holy shit, Joe says I kind of wish Jed McKay was getting Fantastic Four and not X Men book. It's crazy that the Fantastic Four book has zero weight on the overall Marvel universe. I don't I know. Could not agree more. Yeah, I could not agree. All right, let's keep moving with this one. That'll be quick. Star Wars Vision issue number one. You know, we're getting these little prologue issues here and there. This one was really fun. We learned how our our traveling Sith Ronin got his droid, and he got his droid from another Sith master that knew the end was coming. And he had visions of his death. And so we see that happen in this issue. It was fucking awesome. Artwork was really great. The only complaint I have is why isn't this, why aren't we getting a continuation of visions issue or episode one and going beyond that? Because that's what I want. Because this, this yeah. Ronin character is so kick-ass. Mm -hmm. Did you watch it? Yeah. Have you seen it yet? No, 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 I didn't watch it, but I did read this and I did really enjoy it. I was a little confused because I don't know who is, who's what or like what's going on, but like, mm -hmm. I still really enjoyed it. I, I would definitely, well, I would, if this was an ongoing, even with me being super confused, if this was an ongoing, I would be picking this up right away. Any time only... mm. you position a uh, Jedi sam samurai in some way, close the door. I'm the only thing that would make this better, and I'm not shitting on Takashi. Mm -hmm. Is it if Peach, Peach did it? If Peach did it. <laughs> if Peach did it, it would just be a masterpiece. So. I mean, that's why I bought the Peach cover, right? Oof. I pre ordered you, that one. Do yourself a service, Nate. Go watch that episode tonight. It, it's only 20 minutes long. Like, I got a pile time, man. I can't do that. You got a what? <laughs> what did you say? Well, I, the, I have to mow the lawn. It's it's high. And I don't like to do it when the, the sun's out. It's so you're going to do it at 10 at, the, 10 at night? Mm -hmm. Does that wake up your. Shut the fuck up. You're. you're <laughs> stupid uh rick i was uh, just gonna say death of cyclops good to see you back together yes again. rick it's good to see you man 
What does Ronin mean? Drop in, me that one. Uh, I feel like I see it oh. a lot in books. So Ronin is a is a masterless swordsman or warrior, specifically samurai. a masterless a samurai. samurai. Yeah, masterless samurai. Um, and so he just roams, and usually they become swords, uh, hired swords. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and they'll fight for anybody who'll pay them and feed them and clothe them. Um, <clears throat> and in this in this context in Star Wars Visions, this guy was a Sith, and the idea of Sith in this version of Star Wars is a little different. I mean, they're still menacing; they still work for the Empire, but it's a little bit different um, because even in this book, like this guy that he fights clearly has some kind of humbleness in him yet he's still this you know samurai well this is the proper view of sith they're Mm -hmm. not sith aren't inherently bad people they just uh, look uh, i'm not gonna say no 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 do it come on let's go get into it let's do it well the the whole thing in, in star wars i think a ton of people get is jedi sith bad guys and that's never been the point like the Sith that we get are the bad guys, right? They get the light, the red lightsaber, or they're evil. Darth Maul with horns, and like in a lot of ways, those characters are that thing for sure. But like the Sith aren't Empire uh, people. Like they don't like fight for the Empire. The only people that ever fought for the Empire are Darth Vader and and the little people they've created in between in like Clone Wars and stuff. But like and the Emperor, right? Uh, well, and yeah. And so, like, but the actual Sith, like the thousands of years of history of we actually have, there was no empire for them to fight against. They just went against the tenets of everything that the Jedi stand for. And most of our stories are told to the eyes of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. And so we get to see a Sith, how Sith really are. And it's like, they're more harsh and, and they are more cut and dry with things. But like, there's still like honor and there's still like, commitment to the tenets you know yeah. but this so this guy has kind of backed away like he's still ruthless but he's not considered a sith anymore he's hunting sith um and if but the thing is, is he's not inherently good either like in the visions episode of the the show he just so happens to save a village was it his intent no he was going after the sith and yep. the byproduct was that he saved a village so there you go. But this was great. It was really fun. It was. <sighs> okay. I don't. Any. Okay. Hold on. Huh. Let me just establish this. I did not have a good time with our DC comics. So if you loved your DC comics this week, I apologize. Like, I'm sorry. I'm about to shit on all of it. <laughs> um, World's Finest to me was a complete and utter waste of time. And I didn't like it. And I have. When have you ever heard me say that outside of the annual? Like, I am a fucking lover of this book and i thought this issue to me was a total waste of time um and i'm not saying that the story that was in it wasn't good it just i didn't care i didn't care for the 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 book um and then we got a prologue to the annual which we only got a little bit of the annual of the story that he was establishing remember that like when the annual came out the first story was like five pages long and we were like what are we doing he's like find out in world's finest and you're like and now here are like two more pages of that right and i'm like oh re- really oh okay uh anyway i i just i'm gonna be short and sweet on this i didn't like it i thought it was dumb um and i didn't like i the the lex Luthor following joker around like i just didn't like it i don't know i <laughs> you talk I'm, I'm done no i have nothing i have nothing to say i just this was a this was a big fart in an otherwise very good, but I just there was nothing of fun consequence in this. Issue. It was a very big fart. Like, uh, just... I, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, if you really enjoyed like '70s style um, uh, Joker Lex Luthor stuff, um, like Dennis O'Neill sort of thing, you 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 would probably really like this. I, I feel like Mark Wade was doing an homage to '70s Lex Luthor and Joker and trying to put his own modern twist on it and do that thing and like for some people i'm sure that really hit and i'm not knocking it and and it did for a lot he, of people i think he did it well it just didn't hit for me at all and so it felt like something i just wanted to brush over yep yep that's, that's that what cover did you like well the best part of this was the shatner Santa cover shatter. <laughs> yeah shatter i saw cover. that shatner william shatner oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um 
Very random. Very random. Um, hold in Hong Kong, the silly goose was spoken. <laughs> My silly goose patois is DC's April re-special with three outstanding silly stories from featuring apes, extra points if you got a banana scented cover. What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> that's, a, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. I like the Hong Kong. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just It is what it is. All right. Green Lantern War Journal issue number seven. I didn't read it because I don't read this, but yeah, this was this this was not um, at all like what Jim has been saying about the DC books. There was no filler here whatsoever. Um, we are fully out in the thick of it. John has woken up and is not only just in, in like a different universe or anything. Like his ring literally can't compute at his location at all. He's like literally the none of these stars exist. There's this weird black hole star in the sky, like. The computer's like you, like everyone around you, every creature, every language, everything. I have no idea what any of that is. But then he just sees like this dude chilling on an asteroid. He's like, ah, Guardian, we've been waiting on you. You're about to be part of the war, man. <laughs> He's like very much this like weird hippie guy. Um, mm. And while it wasn't the best issue, I feel like it was a good um, reestablishment kind of of what we're doing here. Like, in case you were a little bit confused or what, where the stakes are at. And then of course we also had more good family moments. Um, you know, his mom is back at steelworks and he created that construct of his sister and that has fully turned a recreation of his home and all the things inside of it. Mm. And, um, steel and Natasha and, someone else like go to the door and try to talk to the construct of his sister. And we're like, Hey, like your mother still needs medical help too. This isn't helping her. Like, you know, like dementia also causes like, um, health issues, you know, like, uh, I don't know, immune system issues. And mm. the sister's basically like, Hey, just in case you forgot, I'm a construct of John. Go fuck yourself. You're not going to tell me what to do. <laughs> like I'm, when you talk to me, you talk to John and, I'm not putting up with this shit. And so I was like, oh, damn, that's pretty hardcore. Um, but yeah, we get a lot of like fun, big, like space moments, Revenant dead. And then everyone keeps like the, the people that he doesn't know, these like alien race and stuff, keep pointing towards this star. This one guy's got like a big, like Viking horn that he's blowing and all this stuff. And then at the very end, this little, this little goo, ghoul of a guy comes popping out of it. And I'm like, oh shit. Like, seems like it's about to go down mm. so yeah pretty pretty good not the best of the issues um but pretty good. i still enjoy it it's definitely not filler definitely not any of that which a majority of dc books were and that's why i feel like getting johnson's the best why didn't it add it i just added it unless it's right here uh, no where is it there it goes in the back okay so we'll just start here all right superman uh, to save Lex Luthor. So we get an explanation of why this group of baddies is out for Lex and mm -hmm. he betrayed him. Shocker. Um, like he does with everybody. Uh, Superman learns to love and trust the Superman Corp. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you know what? I, at the end of this issue, uh, when everything was resolved and we're like, what are we going to do now? And it's like, here comes Lobo and here comes Brainiac. I was like, oh, you know what? That seems kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And then you read the, the bottom and it's like, but if you want to read the full story, read Action Comics and then come back to Superman for part two. And I was like, fuck you. I'm done. I <laughs> I am. I'm sorry. That was very harsh. And I used a really bad language oh. and I apologize. But like, I don't care. Like, Whatever momentum this issue built for me to be actually kind of excited for what they're about to do, I'm not there. Because I really don't want to pick up Action Comics. I don't want to buy it. Because isn't Williamson writing? Isn't he writing it? So he's writing Action Comics and Superman. Just for the event. I don't care. I don't like that. It pisses me off. I know. I know. I'm just saying. I just. I am out. I'm out. <laughs> and I hate saying that because like the artwork in this book was really good. It was good. Yeah, David Bellion like, did an amazing job. I'm tired. I'm tired of it. I the direction, whatever direction this book had, 
And you know, maybe we're making, maybe we're taking a massive L here, and maybe we're we're gonna regret it when it's all said and done, and be like, you didn't, wait, you didn't pick it up. You didn't do actually comics and super. No, I don't want to do it again. I'm tired. Like, I'm kind of tired of it. Like, I, I, it just feels like we established a really cool thing here, and now we're like, nah, now we're gonna popcorn things, right? And like, you hated the time jump where he went into back in time, right? And I understand it. I get that now. Like, I understand the feeling of that because it was just so fucking random. And then it got like thrown into here too. Like, oh, when I was back in time, I remember like, wait, what? What are we doing? Like, stay with the chain, stay with the S, the, the core. But you know, and now we're dealing with Brainiac. And like, I'm sure I'll eat my words. I'm sure when Action Comics comics comes out, which what is it next week or when is that? Or is it next month? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll come in and I'll be checking out, and Mike and Lee will both be like, you know, you not picking up Action Comics. Like, why? Why are you doing that? <laughs> like, stop it with your DC guilt, goddammit. Yes, I'm picking it up. You know, like, that's what'll end up... That, that's what's going to happen. Yes. Um, Almost assuredly. And so it's just kind of frustrating, because, like, all... I feel like... I feel like the momentum right now is... It's just... It was... Ooh, hey! Buy more! I'm like, just keep it in the fucking book. Just... Just... You know? Like... Keep it in the book. Yes, we know... You, you, you hate it. We know you hate it. No, I like it so much, <laughs> and that's why I'm mad. Uh, it looks like it's not till the the tenth that that comes out. It looks okay. like of April. Of April, it looks like they are. It is going to be a weekly. No, not a weekly thing. No, we get two. Um, we get two Williamson books a month, basically. Uh, no. There's also. Well, there's this House of Brain. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, we we don't need to get all this right now. There's also this like House of Brainiac special number one that comes out the first. No, of May. I've done this. DC is notorious of just like adding, just like Marvel. I'm not saying Marvel's not guilty of it too, but Marvel. Here's my here's the difference, and I'm gonna get into a rant here. When Marvel says, "Hey, we're doing an event," right? I'm like, okay, we know that we're gonna get anywhere to fifty to seventy five extra issues. <laughs> that we can volunteer to read, right? And they know they're like, and you got this, and you got this, and you got this, and you got this. But not once did they go, you gotta fucking read that to understand the story. DC goes, no, you need to read this, and you need to read this, and then you need to read this special. Then we got this Omega, or we got this Alpha over here, and an Omega, plus three other tie-ins that are one shots. You have to read those to re to understand this book. Then you read them and you go, I. I didn't need to read that at all. Didn't need to read that at all. I didn't need to buy any of it. I could have just read the main story. And so to me, it's incredibly misleading and disingenuous, in my opinion, of DC to do what they're doing right now. And I'm tired of Williamson. <laughs> I'm tired of Williamson. I will just say that this issue had the opposite effect to me. I really enjoyed it. And I was, I mean, this feels like the regular Superman that we had before the stupid time jump. Correct. Weird. Correct. Yep. yep. Uh, and I, you're gonna do it. Oh, you're gonna do it. All right. Uh, well. There, Williamson has good in him, and this this will be the final straw though, because he doesn't have good event in him. And so uh, you know, it's this coming. is small. This is much more contained. This is much more contained. It's only 13 issues, and a couple of those are tie-ins that I'm not even gonna touch, like Power Girl. Look, um, look, it's just one puff. I'm just smoking it once. I'm not. Look, oh, listen, I, I I'm not addicted. Inhale. I promise. I, 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 yeah, I'm, I just like the way it tastes. It smells really good. That's how you sound right now. <laughs> I'm going to remind you and I'm going to um, fucking remind you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I literally talk at a screen about comic book shops on Sunday nights. So, or, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, that makes sense that I, I kind of have a problem here. That's the point. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I don't know, dude. I just don't suck me in. No, we're don't guilt it. me. It's, it's literally our jobs to read. That's why we come here is to read it for the people and tell them. You're right. Just can't, <laughs> just can't quit people. you. Ah, we'll, we'll get it Trash. All right. Uh, Nightwing. <laughs> it is. It's not. It's not. It is. Here's why it's trash. It's the best issue of this run yet. And that's why it's trash. Mm-hmm. This, for me, 
was Silly Goose Fun Time, but it, it irritated me in a lot of ways. Because while I am fine with fill-in issues, and I even think that for a fill-in issue, this did a pretty good job of sure, what it is. Right. Like 100%. This is going to... I th- even think that this issue will be looked back on like when they do those little like oh like trinity collections like the best stories of the trinity like this is going to be a fun memory of of, yeah. of it all 100%. but the momentum that king has been trying to build um with his current run this like slams the emergency break on it and points directly to how he is failing on the other issues of his run why did it take seven issues in a complete plot crash and with a fill-in issue for me to finally see you write Wonder Woman and for me to actually feel that it's Wonder Woman and hear her thoughts and actions. Because so far, this is the first issue where Wonder Woman has appeared in this run. We've got a weird robot version that he created that is just coasting through life. And time out. Okay, time you out. Yes. Okay. Shit, I lost it. Where was it? Fuck. All right, keep going. And when it comes back, I'm going to be like, ah! <laughs> And so I am I am happy. Like, I know a lot of people are like, shit gets goofy in this. Like, Superman, like, they they go, you got it? Yeah, I do. Go, go, I'll remember. Go, yeah, yeah. This issue has nothing to do with Tom King's run. Right. And that's, and I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong, because you're right. Like, we, it feels like Wonder Woman. She's, it's, her voice is here. But there was this has. It, correct me if I'm wrong. In any other Tom King run, where like let's say the uh, the Mister Fan, what is it, Mister? What was the one with uh, Big Barda and Mister Miracle? Mister Miracle. Is anyone anyone in the chat or any if you're watching this as a past episode, let me know in the comments. In that run, we it, it that happened prior to us getting into comics. When you read that, were there any fill-in issues? Because in the no, collective. Of Okay, so that was a pre-planned twelve-issue only thing where the artist and the writing started six months, eight months, way, way, way prior. And I'm not saying, I guess I'm not saying that that was the expectation, right? With this, Mm -hmm. but to me, that's what was going on. Like, I maybe that was the subtext here, and that's how it's written, right? You've got this story, and I'm not saying what what's going on with the story is, um. I think your your assessment of it and your criti- your your criticism of it are completely valid, right? But talk about a total shift, right? Like we just got done doing this massive battle where if you didn't read the de- the the big thick words and you actually just read the dialogue and the action that was going on the page, it was really cool, right? And then there was this cliffhanger where she is broken and she gets picked up and it's like, but we didn't know that we were going to lose so badly. You leave it on that hanger. You leave it on that on that on that uh, cliffhanger. Then you see this cover, and you're like, "Oh, well, shit! Is Superman is Superman going to get involved?" Get involved? In this? Yeah. yeah. And then you open this book, and it's like, "Hey, let's go to space and buy a, a birthday present for Batman." <laughs> Wait. Did I mean, we just the solicitations? You should have. I don't give funny. a fuck. I don't care. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> did we just not destroy DC? I'm saying the, the capital, like right. the district of Columbia. Why are we in space? What are we doing? Like, I'm sorry. I'm. You are. I, it's I to- you're I having told a Nathan you, moment. It's OK. Sure. I guess I've never had one in a long time. Yeah, you but like it's, I was yeah. incredibly frustrated with DC this week. And to me, as much as we are dogging Tom King's run. Like I, mm-hmm. I am genuinely interested in the story that we're telling of Wonder Woman going up against the U.S. government. The robot being, Wonder Woman. Sure, I'm not saying I don't like the robot Wonder Woman. I'm just saying Jim is saying bad words. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I'm. I want to call his mom. I didn't want to pay for this because well, that's not the yeah. story I'm reading. And now it's like, hey, let's go with faith. And then Batman's like. <laughs> a diamond <laughs> you know like <laughs> what are we doing no, what are we see, doing but if you remove the the momentum killing and sure. if you remove the because sure. there's i mean there are, i have harsh criticisms 
of this run and this issue pointed to them. But this issue itself, totally removed from the rest of the context, the singular issue itself, I thought was a great issue. You're correct. I'm not, but it, but but we You're can't correct. look. We can't always look at things in a vacuum, right? The the surrounding parts of it obviously take into account the other things. And like, this I, isn't I think this the same is book. Just a, no, it's not. But villain issues don't always fill. In then the just. Uh, Maybe it's my fault. I didn't read the solicitations. I probably should have read it. And it said, <laughs> hey, let's have a silly goose time in space and buy Bruce Wayne a birthday present and and, yeah. and take selfies. Which is hilarious. Sure. When they got a black coffee and then the hot mocha, caramel, drizzle, coconut milk, whatever drink. And then that was the drink for Superman. And the black coffee was for Wonder Woman. I was like, oh, yes, that's so great. I love that. There's some snot-nosed kid in his basement going, Oh my gosh, Superman would never drink that drink. In the context, so you would have to assume that this issue will not be collected with the entire story arc that Tom Keating's trying oh, to no, write, right? be, I think this would be collected exactly how it's released. That would piss me off so much. If I was reading, like if I, that would, that would piss me off, man. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> ugh. I, no, I don't assume DC will do the the collection correctly ever. Why? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't get it. Have intelligent people working in their collections department. At I thought you were. Marvel I thought you were. I thought you were saying because you, you're not intelligent, James. I thought no. that's what you were saying. <laughs> no. Damn. All right, Nightwing issue twelve. Hey, did you know? Um, wait, hold on. This was somebody's pick of the week. Was it? Was it Empire? Okay. Empire said this was tied with something else. I don't mean this against you at all. I, anything that I'm he saying knows. is is no is no it is not a criticism of any of our viewers or any of our followers. But I didn't know that uh, Dick s- is that he still needed mentorship from Batman, and Batman needed to realize that Nightwing was his own man. And that he had he he was under control. Oh, I didn't know that. See, and aren't you glad they told you this issue? Right? I'm so glad this issue came out and told me that. That he's I'm not being, the issue is I'm being genuine. You're I know you are. Disingenuous. I'm being facetious, yes. Um <laughs> and it's not and let me preface it this way. That notion and what was what was told is great. But again, how many more issues do we have until this run is over? Oh, I think four. Really? You, you're you serious? Yes. That makes me more upset. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, five with seven. Okay. Well, that's a little better. If it had been four, then this would really uh-huh. upset me because to me, this is a time waster. If there, if there's only four issues, if there was only four issues left, then I'd be even more upset because how many loose ends do we have until the end of the run? Well, now we have seven, right? But like one. What? Well, we have one loose end, right? Yeah, and it's the biggest one of all. It's of course, the thing that we, of course, it's, yeah. That see, that is the criticism of this book. That is that is what I want. Is that what I'm down for? The that's the, what I'm trying to say. No, it's not. You're trying to shit on the awesome character moment between Dick. Time. And, and you Batman. didn't hear what I said. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. Maybe I when didn't. when it comes to what was told in the book it was it was great yeah the character development is great okay. again we only have seven issues after this issue to resolve the okay. biggest thing is this what we need to be doing with our time that's what i'm trying to get at and maybe okay. i'm not articulating it po- no, no, i understand now i'm not mad at you maybe i'm not articulating it properly but to me <laughs> so don't make me say bad words damn it um <laughs> To me, we're wasting our time because the biggest issue after Blockbuster died was Heartless. Mm-hmm. And then we got this glimmer of hope in issue 111. And then at the very end, it was like, this is a copycat. You know, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then we resolve it again in 112. So what's to say that in the coming issues all the way up to seven, we're not going to do this? And it's like, Tom K- or Taylor, what are we doing? What are you doing? Like you had us, you had us at hello, you know, like just, <laughs> just finish it. Like, yeah. 
you know, the cr- yeah, yeah cr- be the credit. Finish him. Sweep the leg. Let's go. Like, let's get it done. And to me, and I'm not saying, uh, let me rephrase it. I'm not saying. Yeah, rephrase the it. Story- you've been phrasing things. I know. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm phrasing things. <laughs> the story was great. The, the dynamic between Bruce and Dick, awesome. To see him grow, great. Love it. But in the context of the story that we're about to end, what are we doing? It feels like we're wasting time. Like, oh, I, I just can't stretch it to eight. So let's put in another let's put in a two issue filler. And then maybe I'll give you the ending that you're looking for. And I to me, that just sows seeds of distrust. Like shit. Maybe we don't stick the landing. Maybe we never resolve Heartless. And how shitty would that be? Like it would hurt. Yeah. Um, Taylor at his ooh, worst is still better than ooh. what is it? I can't see it because there's a heart in the way. Uh, then, Taylor at his worst is still better than King at his best. Sure, I I do uh, not. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't know. I, I think I agree with you. I, I think I, I agree. With I, you. I, no, I maybe could have let it slide without Helen of Windhorn, but after that came out. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you were like, it was too good. You, you said the explicit thing that I said today. That's what you said last week about that. Um, but also, I've read a ton more Taylor than I have King, so that also probably factors. In. <coughs> oh, dang! Wait, one Taylor. of those. <coughs> I just got uh, you know, like when in anime is when they like they get stabbed, like <coughs> like that's that's what I you know I had the mm. blood shit out of my mouth. Um, oh, shit in his mouth, great. Shoot out of my mouth. Shoot, shoot. He's got is that it? That's our, that's mouth. the end of our show. Did we miss something? I we missed it. It's already 9.30? What? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. I was kind of unhinged today, and I apologize. I'm not normally like that, and I just want to say yeah, I'm man. sorry. And I love every single one of you, and <laughs> I apologize for my language. Um, King's Versions Vision Series was fantastic. I've actually... I, rem- I haven't read that. I want to read that, though. I do want to read that as well. Well, that's... Uh, Episode 168. I don't know. I hope I hope I fulfilled all of y'all's. Uh, you know, just that I hope I hope you got everything that you wanted and more. And I, mm-hmm. I apologize for my vulgar language, but I'm just passionate, guys. I'm just a very passionate person, and I felt like I needed to be heard. <laughs> like I needed to be heard. Hear me now. Hear me. <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone for watching this episode of this issue of Two Fat Guys Pull Us. We will be back this Tuesday for another new comic book day. They come every, they come flying fast every week, and uh, <laughs> you're allowed to let them have it, buddy. <laughs> um, next week is a little, it's a little slower. Um, yeah, I mean, it's what I've got. I've got nine books. I don't know how many you have. Actually, I only have one independent. Oh, um, so, it, we have yours on my list. We have twelve total books. Twelve totals. All right. Well, cool. Um, but anyway, what up, Stefan? Thank you so much. What's up, y'all? Cobra Commander. There's this, there it is. Thank you, Stefan, for the super Cobra. chat. Um, but yeah, we'll have a we'll have a, a decent week. Uh, there's one issue there that I'm kind of like, oh great. But then there are two other issues that I'm like, mm, okay. Uh, <laughs> but you'll have to see on Tuesday when we have our new comic book video, which will come out at 4:30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So see you guys then. And then we'll be back here again Sunday to talk about all those books and more. And mm-hmm. uh, you know. We'll have a silly use time. We'll have a great time. And maybe, hey, maybe we'll talk about Visions. Nate will actually have watched Visions. And maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe just maybe, Nate will be ca- caught up on X-Men 97 and we'll talk about it. Because episode crazy. two, after episode two, you're just kind of like, well, damn, what, you know, what, <laughs> what are we going to do now? So very excited for that. Um, but yeah, we'll catch you guys next Sunday. Well, actually Tuesday and then Sunday and, uh, yeah, we'll see what it is. One more thing from chat. Um, Jane says, bye. Thank you, sir. Later fam. And then thanks for another great show. We love the passion gym. Keep it up. Oh, I'm so happy that you guys like my dirty words. <laughs> uh, Johnny, whoever said Ramvi didn't impress him that they, many <laughs> the many desolate star. star. Yeah, dude, that was, oof. Rare that was, <laughs> you didn't read it. I read the first issue and I was not impressed. Does not count. Somna next week. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. But anyway, yes. as always, fam, be kind to one another and read more comics. We'll catch you guys live next week. Later.
Samna. Samna. Oh my god, 